Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to Code with Canon. My name is Canon and today I'm going to show you how you can link your your application or your e-commerce website with uh, M-Pesa. M-Pesa is a payment is a payment gateway or a, can I call it just a platform in in Kenya that is used to to do the mobile transfer of money so in this video I'm going to show you how you can send SDK push to your phone and to your customers and all that, all they need to do is enter the mpesa pin and process the payment successfully so I'm going to be using tiny pesa but there are other gateways that you can use. There is uh, something like Inset. There's something like the Daraj API offered by the Safaricom M-Pesa. So for this video, I'll be using Tiny Pesa. The reason I'll be using it is because it's easy to navigate through and the processes are not as, as huge as the processes is the processes yeah. easy even for a beginner or for a junior developer so the first thing you need to do is log into the your website it's tinypesa.com like this or you can just search maybe let's say tinypesa when you search tinypesa you get that link it will be the first one i think yeah tinypesa.com so since I've already opened, I don't need to open another URL. So here, you'll go to the developers, but first you need to create an account. I already have an account, so I don't need to create an account. So you need to create an account here. You say, it'll give it the till number or the bank account or the mobile money. One thing, the best thing about this, you can get your money transferred direct to your bank account you don't uh, it, it doesn't have necessary to be sent to your till number or your pay bill that is offered by safaricom you can send it directly to your bank so when you create a name here let's say i have multiple names here but you can say let's say test yes. and so let's say it's a youtube and then say claim when you claim they'll send you an email and you'll send uh, you'll you'll create the the account number everything and then they will request you to send some documents that your id and maybe your kra pin for verification to avoid the scammers and stuff but it takes less than a day to per, to process all your documents so they are very reliable that i can give them so the next thing after maybe after creating your account you need to go to the developer the developer documentation and getting started i don't think you need that so the next thing you you go to the three guys dk this is what we want now so you'll find that uh, they have the uh, api here this is the, the one that will in, initialize the sdk push and has multiple parameters which is the amount msisdn which is the phone number and the account number that you created during the during the registration so the response will come as a json file and the callback that is it will come as a json file so they have uh, the examples they have the languages the call can use the current method to request uh, to initialize the SDK the Golang but in this video I'm going to show you about force PHP so it's for PHP 7.0 and end up up to PHP 8 it works all it works all for all of them so uh, this one I don't think I'll copy this because the last time I tried using this uh, version, the new version they updated a few days ago, 
it didn't work for me so i'll leave a link in the description to my source code the one i created using the curl so here's my code to initialize the stk push so uh, the, the first two the first few things are the same that is the url the data and the headers what's different in my code is from here when you down, downloads but it's no problem you, you, can, you can try this if it fails you can use mine that depends on you so so the first thing that you need to do is copy paste that code or copy this code of mine and I'll explain what the code does step by step so let's say you have an e-commerce website and customers uh, uh, customers have do your clients have different phone numbers so you want to create something dynamic for your uh, uh, for your customers and the account number will be constant and the amount must be dynamic because the products are very prices from product to product so the first thing you can say let's say in my case here i have a, a variable called the phone number and i've given it my number here of which now if maybe you have a let's say a website or an application you can use this maybe let's say as a post method Sorry for that. you can use it as a post method and then you can receive maybe from a form or from a url so as for for me because i'm not using it uh, in e-commerce right now this is just to show you how you can do it i'll just create it as a static variable which i'll say my phone number is that one and so it's that one so and then my account number is this one this one is one of my test accounts don't worry about that and there's this is the url the url is the one that i said these will initialize your the sdk push it's the api it's the tiny pesa api so the next thing we have an array of the, the name data and these array uh, carries three parameters it has the amount it has the msi sdn and the account number and for the amount for me it will be static if you have let's say um, post method you can say dollar sign amount will be equals to maybe dollar sign underscore post or let's say for our case let's say one shillings so the next thing you need to do yeah yeah you say the amount will be equals to the dollar sign amount remove those quotation marks this one the msisdn will be the phone number phone number so and the account number will be the dollar sign account number like that so I, I believe at, at this point you know all the conventions about array at the end of the array the last parameter you don't need to uh, to insert a comma at the end of it otherwise if you do so if you do like this it will bring an error so the next thing that you need to do is insert the api key this api key after successful registration and verification uh, you'll have a dashboard the tiny pesa dashboard i'll show you how it looks on my on, on my end so just a moment then i'll pull it from my other screen here okay move it to a new window then i'll pull it here so the dashboard looks like this admin and you can create multiple links so for the one i'm using right now is this one 
So you'll have uh, the current selected link, which is the bank name and the account number. And then we have the webhook. This webhook is where you'll uh, you will insta insert your um, callback URL, where you'll receive the responses from Tiny Pesa, and uh, that way you can be able to save that data into your database without having any problem. So the next thing that uh, I was talking about is the API key. The API key will vary uh, from person to person because it has to be unique. So you need to copy this API key and insert it here. I've already done that. So that's the API key. So if you don't see your API key, let's say an example, you just come here to developers and then you'll find it there to add your webhook or your callback, you insert it here. I'll show you how to, to do the callback in my next video, but on this video, I just want to show you how to initialize the SDK push using PHP. So the next thing that you need to do is this. This will help you process the headers and and stuff it's i don't have to explain this you don't really need, need need to know the meaning of all this but if you want to know the meaning of this maybe i can leave the link in the description of uh, how cal operates but if you're good uh, if you're good in php you've already uh, encountered these these things so the next thing uh is this one uh, print my JSON uh, response. This JSON response is for initial, uh, uh, initializing the SDK push. It will tell me whether the initialization is successful or it has failed. So to initiate, to let's test this and see if, whether it's successful or not. Maybe I'll try to do a screen recording on my phone to show you that I've received that push notification. So to do that, that's uh, that's my URL. I've already received that. Uh, that and what do you call it? This request to enter my 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 pin. I'll leave it there as a screenshot of how it looks. And that's all. It shows it's a success. The request uh, one refers to success, and the request ID is this one. And after a successful payment or a failure, it will send the response to this to my what do we call it to my dashboard or to my this webhook URL. That's how you initialize, uh, you send an SDK push. For the response uh, of the callback, I, I'll create a video. Uh, so uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section and maybe I'll try to clarify on the next video. So next time.